Hey everyone, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, we're gonna be covering how plugs work as well as how to install your hooks and stuff like that, okay? Before we get into this video, again, check out my free book for apprentice electricians by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. And if you sign up with your email, I'll send you my free book of what I wish I knew before I became a journeyman electrician here in Canada. Okay, so here is what's called a standard Receptacle. This one is called a Decora. It has that square face, as you can see, Decora. A 20 amp plug has the T, as you can see, that's the different, that's what differentiates a 20 amp plug. These ones are all 15 amp. And you can also see that most, um, actually all of these are what's called tamper resistant. There's a little white kind of uh, protection so that, you know, kids can't push things in really easily. Um, you do not need to have tamper resistant behind certain pieces of equipment, like a fridge and stuff like that. That code rule could have changed, but uh, generally that was uh, the code rule. But back in the day, there was not tamper resistant. It was just a normal plug. Um, sometimes these are annoying, the tamper resistant. Sometimes you really gotta force it, but over time it breaks in, okay? All right, so there's really no difference between a standard and a Decora, it's just, um, how it looks. Uh, you will also see that all of these plugs have these back connections. Never, never use them, okay? Never strip your wire and put it in there. First of all, it's horrible for maintenance if you ever have to change out a plug, and let's say the plug is like live or something like that. Some, it's so hard to pull the wire out of it, and the actual connection is horrible, okay? Always hook your wires, and we hook it by making an actual real hook, and you put it on clockwise, okay? So when you actually screw this, the screw is tightening the wire onto the screw. Some people get super, super technical, and they try to get this, uh, your hook, like the exact perfect length. As a real electrician out there, it's about speed. You don't wanna have it like super long to the point where it's like, for example, something like that. Like that is a horrible install. But um, you don't need to be perfect, perfect. And something like this is, that's, a, a, you know, a great installation, okay? And we screw that down. So we have a standard receptacle. This is kind of like the old school ones. You'll see it only has one screw for your cover plate. You have Decora. It definitely looks way cleaner and more modern. Let's say you purchased a home and you want to upgrade the home a little bit and it's all these plugs. If you upgrade it to these, I'm telling you, just instantly it gives a more modern look to your home. Again, the T is 20 amp. All right, so we're gonna be running a number 12 to these wires. These are all number 14s. And this is a GFCI, okay? I'll make a separate video about what is a GFCI, but as you can see, they're pretty big. Uh, they have actually gotten a little smaller in recent years, which is good. That way it's easier to splice. One little cool little tip I learned actually from, from a friend who is not a, an electrician. You're actually supposed to put these little stickers on all the plugs that are protected by this GF, GFCI, which is a ground fault circuit interrupter. Um, but usually we don't. Okay, so how these plugs work is we have a bond. We are always bonding plugs. We have our neutral, which is our white wire, and then we have our hot, okay? You can also see that in between here, there's a little uh, connection, right? If you wanted to have two separate circuits, or if you even wanted to have a switch, if you wanted to have one switched, you can actually break this tab, and then these are now their own plug. So the top one is different from the bottom one, okay? And essentially that is kind of how this plug works. One other tip I'll pass on to you before we get into um, how to install the wire on the plug is these little um, hooks or uh, little tabs up here. These are really useful that like, let's say you install the plug into the box and it's kind of twisted. You can actually bend these just a little bit very, really, very gently. You gotta be careful because if you do it too much, uh, it won't work good, but you can bend them and that, that can help you even out the plug, all right? So let's talk about how to install a plug, okay? So here is how you prepare the wire to go onto the plug. So there's two ways how you, you can create your hooks. Again, do not use the back stabs or quick connects, whatever you wanna call them. Um, that is like a, the first sign of an amateur electrician or uh, essentially a, a homeowner, okay? We're electricians, we hook our wires. So there's two ways. I always like to use the hole here and I just make just, just a little hook. And as you can see, it looks just like this. The other way is to make the hook up here and there's no right or wrong way. Um, I found I liked the other way, okay? So there's two hooks here. There is this hook and then there is this hook. I like this one. So this rounder hook came from this hole right here. 
okay, one of these two holes. And then this hook up here came from the, uh, the top up there, okay? When we're putting this on, we are making sure to hook it so that when the screw tightens, it will actually uh, tighten with it, okay? So that is the round one. And then here is the other hook one. So it goes on just a little bit easier, but I just find that the actual install isn't as good, right? You're not, you're not really able to see that, but you can see it's kind of loose, right? Whereas the, um, the one I like, the more round one, it just kind of wraps around that screw just a lot better. And then um, depending on you know uh, the situation, you can even kind of tighten this down just a little bit. And then uh, we usually just use our drill. And here's a really cool drill bit, check it out. This is for finishing, it's a number six and a flathead. So it can actually lock in to the slot and give you a really good uh, installation. Okay, so again, we're tightening that down just like this. All right, you do not want to cinch it down. As you heard, it just kind of clicked once. And right there, that's like a super good install, okay? All right, so let's talk about the white one now. Again, we are hooking that so it goes clockwise. Right, we will just tighten that down. Now I make sure to tighten down both screws. Okay, and then we'll also tighten this one down. And I tighten down both screws because especially if it's in a metal box, we never want this screw, as you can see, see how the screw kind of sticks out? So if we were to put the screw on there and only tighten one, one down, you can see that the screw is still sticking out. And if you have to do a maintenance call, because someone plugged in and the plug is moving because someone didn't tighten it down enough and this hits the box, it's gonna short out, it's gonna trip the breaker and now you have a maintenance call and you see this and you're just like, all the person had to do was just tighten down both screws. In a metal box, many times we even uh, put tape, we actually put tape around the screw. So underneath this screw, we would just kind of tape around it and that way uh, the plug will never short out or anything like that. All right, so that is this video about um, how plugs work as electricians and how to get a good install with them, okay? So if you have any questions, leave comments below uh, and never, never use these back connections, okay? No matter what anyone says, don't do it. There is even also a uh, strip length. Uh, you can see that uh, right here, it even has a strip gauge, it even says. And so um, I believe that you can even use this as a strip gauge for your hooks, but over time, you know, something like this, like you're seeing right there, that is still a pretty good install, especially uh, the bond. I like the bond install the best there. Okay, I'll talk to you in the next video. Again, if you wanna stay updated with the website, go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe, and you can get my free book for apprentice electricians of things that I, I wish I knew before I became a journeyman electrician. I'll talk to you in the next video. Make sure to visit the website. There's tons of articles in addition to these videos.